In this video, I'm going to talk about gastric cancer. So for the epidemiology of gastric cancer, if we compare between the races, it is more commonly seen in Chinese, more than Indian or Malay. And if we compare the gender, it is more commonly seen among males compared to females. So Chinese men is more common to have gastric cancer, according to studies. And what are the risk factors that increase the risk of one person getting gastric cancer? So some of the risk factors are infection, especially the Helicobacter pylori, which is a bacteria. So we have to ask the patient if we are suspecting for gastric cancer. We have to ask whether they have any past infection of H. pylori, whether he has been on triple therapy before, or any previous endoscopic procedures and also their results. Other risk factor is the environmental risk factor, which is diet, where there is increased risk if the patient likes to eat preserved foods or canned food and also smoked foods because they are high in salt content. Smoking also increases the risk of developing gastric cancer. And this low socioeconomic status is because if the socioeconomic status is low, there might be poor refrigeration of the food and also poor diet, which is not balanced. Genetic, if there is any family history of gastric CA or other malignancy, and also ask the patient whether they have any significant past medical history, for example, if they had previous gastric resection done before, any history of Barrett esophagus, or history of gastric polyps also increase the risk of gastric CA. So what could the patient present if he or she is having gastric CA? These are a few of the clinical features, can be divided into early features, intermediate to late features and also late features. So for early, some of the patients might be asymptomatic where the gastric CA was an incidental finding when doing body checkup. And also they might present with epigastric pain and dyspepsia symptoms. Whereas for intermediate to late features include anemia, melina where there is blackish stool, hematomesis means vomiting of blood, Early satiety is a significant feature of gastric CA where the patient complains that um, before this, for example, before this they were able to eat until one plate of rice until become full but then now after eating half plate of rice they become full already. So that means there is early satiety which means there is early sense of fullness. Dysphagia if they have a problem in swallowing food and also nausea and vomiting if there is gastric outlet obstruction due to the tumour. Late features include loss of appetite, loss of weight, and also cachexia. So what are the investigations we can do to diagnose gastric CA? The general investigations include full blood count, where we can assess the hemoglobin levels. If there is anemia, that might suggest some malignancy. And bills and creatinine, if, for example, the patient is having vomiting due to gastric outlet obstruction, then we have to check for any electrolyte imbalance. Liver function test is uh, for best line and also to check the serum albumin level to assess the nutritional status of the patient since he or she might not be eating well so the serum albumin may be low and also check for any liver metastasis in, in case of gastric CA meds to the liver. ECG and coagulation profile is more on pre-operative investigations and for Diagnostic investigations include OGDS plus biopsy. So OGDS is an endoscope done esophageal gastrododonoscopy. So it allows a direct visualization of the uh, stomach mucosa. And then we can also do biopsy if we see any suspicious lesions. We biopsy the edge of the ulcer if there is ulcer seen to do histopathological examination. And other investigations include double contrast upper GI barium contrast. Okay. And also for staging purpose, we can do CT of the thorax, abdomen, and pelvis to look for the um, look for any distant metastasis. So there are a few classifications we can use to classify gastric CA. The first one is Bowman's classification. So divided into four types, which is type 1 polypoid tumor. Type 2 is fungating tumour, type 3 ulcerated tumour, and type 4 is infiltrating tumour. 
or diffuse thickening, also known as diffuse thickening tumor. Another classification is the Laurent classification, divided into two main types, which are the intestinal type and the diffuse type, where the diffuse type has a worse prognosis. For okay, to stage the gastric CA, this is the TMN's TNM staging. So let's take a look at this TNM staging. For T, T means the tumor, tumor size and the invasion. So T1 can be divided into T1A and T1B. You can look over here. T1A is if the tumor invades the lamina propria or muscularis mucosa. T1B is if it invades the submucosa. T2 is invade the muscularis propria. T3 invades subserosa. T4 invades serosa and also adjacent structures. Whereas for N is the limb nodes uh, that are involved. So we can see N0, N1, N2, and N3. And M means if there is any distant metastasis. So for treatment of gastric CA, the surgical principle is um, to ensure there is a wide resection to achieve negative margins, do end block resection of the limb nodes and any structures involved by local invasion. And after the resection, we will have to re-establish the GI continuity with a gastroenterostomy, where there are three options that I will explain later on. And also adjuvant chemotherapy can be done. So these are some of the surgical resection options. First one is partial gastrectomy. Second is subtotal gastrectomy. And the third one is total gastrectomy. So I have included the explanations over here. And you can see this picture over here. This is the blood supply of the stomach. This. So the surgical resection options depend on where the tumor is. And total gastrectomy means removal of the whole stomach together with all these five arteries transected. So this total gastrectomy is usually done when the tumor is at the proximal region of the stomach. If it is at the distal region, we can uh, suggest for partial or subtotal gastrectomy. So after the resection, we have to do reconstruction as well, which can be done through Burov 1, Burov 2, or Rox NY esophageal jejunostomy. So Burov 1 is gastrododenostomy. Let's look at this picture over here. So Burov 1, where there is an anastomosis between the uh, proximal region of the stomach together with the duodenum. Bureau of 2 is gastrojejunostomy, where the remaining part of the stomach is anastomosed with the jejunum. And the third reconstruction option is Rooks and Rooks and Y esophageal jejunostomy. This is the preferred option after total gastrectomy is done. So you can see over here after total gastrectomy, the stomach, the whole stomach is remove so the esophagus will be anastomosed to the uh, proximal part of the jejunum whereas the lower end here you can see there is jejunal jejunostomy done you can refer to the a b c d labeled parts for easier understanding so this is rocks and y esophageal jejunostomy so that's all for this video thank you